Now is the time to know God's purpose for your life. Mary Crowley Ministries has been traveling the world, equipping and preparing people on how to find God's purpose for their life through conferences, preaching engagements, prophetic meetings, and youth outreaches. Join Mary Crowley for God's Word for you today. Now is the time to be heard. Welcome to the Now is the Time program. I'm Mary Crowley. An epidemic of addiction is sweeping this nation. The drug is called ICE, a potent form of methamphetamine. ICE is more addictive than crack cocaine. One hit of ICE and 98% chance you will be addicted. It invades every neighborhood, young or old, rich or poor, urban or rural. Our prison system is overrun with meth addicts. In some cases, over 90% of inmates have been meth users. It is definitely America's most dangerous drug. On our program today, we have Dr. Mary Holly, who has written the book, Crystal Methamphetamine, They Call It Ice. Welcome to the program, Dr. Holly. Thank you. Dr. Holly, now how did you get involved with crystal methamphetamine? I got involved with methamphetamine problem when it affected my family. My brother was 22 years old when he got hooked on crystal, and he was 24 years old when it killed him. Uh, first, it made him crazy, made him delusional. He thought the police could see through the walls, they could read his mind. And he was at a party one night, and the fellow next to him had a heart attack and died right in front of him from shooting crystal. Well, he thought that because his fingerprints were on the flask, he was learning how to cook that night, he'd spend the rest of his life in prison. And so he wanted to run away, he wanted to go to Mexico. And my mother knew that a crazy white boy wouldn't last five minutes in Mexico. And so she took him to my house. And I, that's the first thing I knew about him being addicted. Uh, he was crazy, he was hallucinating, he was violent, uh, and um, he was incredibly depressed. Now, where was he? Who was the first person who gave him this drug? Where was he, at a party or something? Yeah, a friend of his took him out for a birthday bash for his 22nd birthday. They were going to show him the world. And uh, they were smoking pot, and then they passed around some LSD, and then they got passed around some methamphetamine. And the first hit changed his life. Now, did he take ice? I know there's different forms of the crystal methamphetamine, but ice is the most potent of all the different forms of it. Mm -hmm. Was it ice that he, that he took yes. that night? Yeah, the first exposure was with ice. Uh, and ice is the most potent form of methamphetamine. It is a hydrochloric acid salt of methamphetamine. It's m 10 times stronger than the old stuff they had back in the 50s. Uh, it is 10 times more addictive. It's more addictive than crack cocaine. And it causes more brain damage than cocaine does. Now, where did this drug, where did it uh, originate from? It started out, it was developed in Japan back in the 20s as an uh, aid for people trying to lose weight. Uh, and very quickly they realized how addictive it was and they took it off the market. But they were still clandestine labs making it. And it became popular during uh, World War II. Uh, the kamikaze pilots were using it all through the Japanese military, and the stormtroopers on Hitler's side were using methamphetamine as well. Um, it was the lower grade stuff that they had at that, at that time. It wasn't as powerfully addictive, uh, but it made people in, uh, energetic. They could march for days. They could uh, steer their planes into a battleship and blow it up, and so there was a major weapon in the World War II. And then you had mentioned to me earlier that it also was in Vietnam, the Viet Cong were using it? Yes. And if you're fighting against forces that are on methamphetamine, you'd better be on it yourself. If somebody, the, the guy you're fighting against can stay awake for seven or eight days at a time and shoot night and day, you have to take methamphetamine just to defend yourself. So some of these people they were fighting against the Vietnam War, because I've studied a lot about the Vietnam War, but I've never once heard about crystal meth over in, in Vietnam. Mm -hmm. So you're fighting against an enemy that they're on this crystal meth and they can fight for 10 days. Right. And they you don't want to sleep or you might be dead. Right. They called it Yaba back in, in uh, uh, the Vietnam War era. Uh, and you could get it for 60 cents on any street corner. The kids sold it and made it. Uh, and so if you're fighting against somebody that's using it, you have to use it too. Uh, and so about 25% of our servicemen came home addicted to that lower grade methamphetamine that they had back in the 50s and 60s. Uh, then they started manufacturing it uh, domestically and California was the first victim. Uh, the first area in the United States where we manufactured methamphetamine was the motorcycle gangs along uh, the coast of California. And from there it spread across the nation. It's uh, gotten into the Midwest and the Southeast and it's just now reaching the uh, upper seaboard in the Northeast. So now when your brother took this first hit of 
with this ice. And as you mentioned earlier, 98% people, when they take one hit of this drug, are addicted. Right. So did you start seeing symptoms in your brother immediately, or did, did he just immediately get kind of whacked out? Well, I wasn't there when he got that first hit. Uh, I lived in Alabama, and he was in Missouri. The first thing I knew about it is when my mother brought him to my house, and he was obviously crazy. They diagnosed him a paranoid schizophrenic. I mean, he was hallucinating. It was terrible. Um, they put him on some medications and got him some help. I put it, got him a rehabilitation, a psychiatrist. And over the space of a couple, six or eight months, he started getting a little better. He wasn't using drugs at that time. He was living with me and my kids. Um, and uh, he started, his mind started to clear. Uh, he wasn't hallucinating all the time. He, you could talk to him and he could talk back to you. And so we let him get a job. He got a job at a plant down the street from our house. And his first night on his new job, he met a dealer. He started using again started getting crazy again, hallucinating. I uh, got in trouble with the law uh, and uh, ultimately attempted suicide. Um, and then he committed suicide when he was on the 4th of July of year 2000. Uh, he killed himself. Now you had literally taken a videotape of him. Explain what happened where he was over at your home mm -hmm. and he had wanted to talk about what was going yeah. on in his mind. Uh, about six months before he killed himself, he came over to the house one night and he wanted to talk. And he was real uh, agitated, uh, had to talk to somebody. He wanted it on television. What I have to say is real important. Okay, Jim. So we rigged up the uh, VCR on top of the barbecue grill, and we let him talk. And he talked for over an hour. He talked about how he first got involved with it, uh, what it felt like to be high, uh, what hallucinations feel like, how it feels to be out of control, how his life was disintegrating. He talked for an hour. Uh, and then a couple, six months ago, this was five years later, I went to make the videotape for the uh, public schools to try to teach them, uh, teach the kids what methamphetamine is going to do to their brains. And my husband says, you know, we have that old video. We need to pull that out. And I couldn't stand to look at it. Uh, it's like looking back into his grave. Uh, and your so brother had been passed away at this time? He had been dead for five years by this time. Okay. Uh, and so I gave that video a clip, the f uh, hours worth of video, to my producer and said, here, look at this, see if there's anything valuable in here we can use in this educational video for the public schools. Uh, and so he pulled out eight or ten little segments where I can teach for a few minutes about uh, the biochemistry of methamphetamine, how it affects brain structures, how it causes hallucinations, and then he'll have a hallucination right there in front of you. You can just see him. Uh, he'll describe all the demons that he can see. Uh, and I'll uh, talk about how this drug gets you addicted the very first time you use it, that it changes your, your brain chemistry the first time. And he'll say things like, I'll never get back what I lost that day. 